Bro. Tried to have a full conversation with me. They, they did? Yeah. Oh, nice. So like 40 miles an hour, he's like, what's up, Paul? <laughs> it's funny. Yo, what is up, guys? Duke of DC here. Welcome to another video. And this is the 2022 Honda Navi. And it's Honda's newest old motorcycle. All right, everyone, 2022 Honda Navi. Now, this is a new motorcycle for the United States. It is not a new motorcycle uh, for Honda. This bike has been in India for quite some time now. now look at these two absolute hooligans in front of me. <laughs> I think it's the cheapest motorcycle for sale in the United States right now. I can't believe that, but uh, no, it's 1,807 US dollars. That is nothing. That's crazy. That's so, so, so inexpensive. The, uh, for comparison's sake, the other and most popular mini moto of them all, the Honda Grom, sells for $33.99, $3,399 US dollars, plus a $200 destination fee. Do I sound like a Honda commercial yet? This is something that you can genuinely keep up with uh, your friends on as long as you're going around city streets and nothing over about 50 miles per hour. That's where uh, this motorcycle tops out at. These are the bikes that are selling, right? Uh, the Honda Grom is the number one selling motorcycle for Honda right now. I think like a million sold. Uh, it's not the number one selling Honda motorcycle ever, I don't believe. I think that that still goes to the Super Cub. But there's so much history here, right? These, these little mini motos, these smaller displacement motorcycles are starting to take such precedence in the industry uh, because of their low cost of entry, their low insurance premiums, and their unbelievable uh, customization. And I'm pleasantly surprised. This is a really fun motorcycle. I've been having a great time. The 110cc single delivers a pretty peppy amount of uh, power. You do need to carry some speed into corners if you're trying to make a difference there. Uh, the braking is linked and it's drum braking. So that's great for uh, new riders that are having a difficult time maybe working out the fact that they need to actuate both the front and the rear brake in another motorcycle situation. And that's really what this ultimately is. This is a bike for people that might be new to riding. Uh, maybe you're trying to get your significant other into riding. Maybe you want to get your kids into riding at a young age. Who knows? Maybe you are a younger adult. You're 18, 19, 20 years of age. You're going to school and you need a way to get to and from uh, college or, or high school or something in an inexpensive manner and at $1,807 I you know the craziest thing is that even as a, a kid working minimum wage jobs at like the pool or you know at a restaurant or something you can purchase this motorcycle but no 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 it has its own distinct styling it's a lot larger dimensionally than a Grom which gives you more confidence when you're riding so in this situation right now I would be a little bit lower I would have a, a little bit smaller wheelbase on a Grom this is giving me more stability more confidence i feel like i have more of a presence on the road which is very important especially to new riders who feel maybe a little bit uncomfortable around traffic some of the features that i think are fantastic the little stuff right this has a fuel gauge can you believe it some bikes that cost orders of magnitude more don't have a fuel gauge and of course most people are probably thinking you're saying like look that doesn't matter but ultimately for someone who's new to riding the less you have to think uh, about things like that, you know, fuel, uh, what gear you're in, stuff like that. That's a, that's a big deal to people. This is such an amazing experience for me as a moto vlogger to be around other moto vloggers in a group ride situation where we're all trying to capture this story. I can't wait to see everybody's video. Please check in the description down below. I will put everybody's uh, tags down there for their YouTube channels. There's some really, really talented creators here and some uh, very, very enthusiastic motorcycle fans, and I love that. Apparently, we're on our way to take a ferry, which I am just personally excited about. Honestly, this bike is so peppy off the line. I really do think it doesn't have any issues with acceleration. We were talking as a group, and I, I, it's kind of split where, like, 30 to 50 percent of the group is a little bit like I, you know i could need a little bit more acceleration off the line so this is a automatic transmission motorcycle it's a uh, cvt which i believe is a continuously variable transmission uh, effectively it's an unbelievably smooth transmission it has kind of infinite numbers of gears really that's how the cvts work 
and I like it. You know, some people are going to be, a lot of the purists are going to say like, oh, it's not a, a true motorcycle if it's not a manual and you're not shifting through the gears. I understand that, but at the same time, this does, uh, again, broaden the horizons for people who maybe are afraid at this point that they're going to be overwhelmed by shifting through the gears as well as all the other things that come into play when you're learning to ride a motorcycle, and this just gives you an opportunity to do that better. As you can see from the rider ahead of me and to my right, it does have uh, ample space for a passenger as well as great bars uh, to hold onto and passenger pegs, which are uh, features that are missing on some of the other mini moto lineups. So this is really a utilitarian motorcycle. And one of the coolest features, in my opinion, is a very nice under seat or uh, under tank storage. As you can see on the left here, I do have a parking brake because this is a CVT. It could uh, technically roll backwards, so it's really important to have a parking brake. Uh, and the way that that's actuated is that you pull it in and then use this little thing to click it to lock. You know, if you sit a little bit far back, you can definitely get this thing to wheelie, especially if you're willing to put your uh, feet on the, <laughs> the pillion pegs and kind of lean it. So it's, you know, this is going to be a very fun bike for a lot of people. I think the, the majority of things that are going to happen here is you're going to have a ton of customizability. There's so many aftermarket parts now because of the Grom and the Mini Moto popularity uh, that companies like Vance and Hines, uh, you know, builders like Steady Garage, they're making bikes. They're, they're producing Mini Motos that are very customized. And because of that, there's parts out there for you to buy and customize yourself. You know, it's got a 0.9 gallon, a 0.9 gallon gas tank, but at 110 miles per gallon, you know, five bucks here in California, which is an unbelievable amount of money for a gallon of gas, but that's the world we live in right now. So this is another example, right? This is a 50 mile per hour road. I am completely, that is, that is full throttle. We all probably are right now. And I'm cruising 50, it'll probably get up to about 52, 54 max. And uh, that's, that's plenty, to be honest. Like, it goes a lot faster than the Ruckus. At best, I could say that this is a motorcycle light. And I think that's all it's supposed to be. You can even see the bikes ahead of me have these, you know, very small 12 inch wheels. They have these ridiculous exhausts and, you know, one single shock in the rear, non-adjustable suspension. But for $1,800, I mean, Jesus, how, how have they built this? How are they making any money on this? Uh, and I think it all comes down to where they're being manufactured. You know, if this bike was manufactured in Japan, like it was built in Japan, it would cost a fortune just to get it here. But because this, I believe, is being built in Mexico, which keeps it on the continent, it lowers the shipping costs and uh, all that savings comes directly to uh, the consumer's benefit, which is great. I think there's a motorcycle out there for everyone. And uh, this bike is gonna find its home in a lot of people's garages. It's such a cool pit bike. It would be so great to put on the back of a trailer hitch. I mean, it weighs 236 pounds, so it's really not that bad when it comes to uh, towability or um, even just you know maneuverability when it comes to taking it when you're not riding it. Because really, that's what this is. Like if I was going uh, on a trip to the beach and I wanted a cool thing for me and my girl to get around on, uh, and I didn't want to drive all the time, I'd throw this on the back of the hitch of the truck that I own, and that's it. You know, this is the bike that I would use while I'm there. I'm, I'm pretty excited to see where the Navi goes in the US. Like, uh, are they going to be as ubiquitous and, and popular as the Groms? Are they going to have the same kind of uh, underground scene as the Ruckuses did? Is this going to be a, a grand slam from Honda? Or is this going to be kind of a, a miss hit? We've been riding for about an hour and 15 minutes. And I can say the seat is uh, not my favorite. I mean, most stock seats aren't. That's just something that, you know, almost on any form of two-wheel transportation, you're gonna wanna change pretty immediately if you're looking for comfort. Oh, wow, we're on a 55 mile per hour road now. Okay, so this is gonna really give us the test here. What's the speed like on the old Honda, the 2022 Honda Navi top speed run? I'm passing this guy. Another unbelievable set of features here, the kickstand. Uh, it it also has a center stand. Like, what? A center stand at $1,800. That's a great, great, valuable item to have on a motorcycle. Wow, this is so cool. Balboa Island. I have, I've, I've never been here in my life. Yeah, you know, around town, it's just so zippy. 
and uh, the, the weight is amazing. I mean, 236 pounds is, is hardly anything on a motorcycle, uh, especially now where we've got, you know, big cruisers and adventure touring bikes that are weighing upwards of 800, 900 pounds. This, uh, this stands out, and it's, it's so nimble. It's so easy to maneuver. It's got a relatively low seat height at 30.1 inches, so it's going to be friendly for uh, some of the vertically challenged riders out there that want to be flat-footing bikes to feel more confident. I totally understand that. Should I go left? Oh, I'm sorry. Get this. Oh, schnitzel. That's cool, man. I've never moto-vlogged uh, moto from the ocean. <laughs> this is a new... Uh, this is a new food for me. This is unbelievable. Look at that. That's that's cool. Oh baby. <laughs> and this is a wonderful day with a bunch of great people that love riding motorcycles. That in essence is probably what the Honda is uh, the the Honda Navi is all about. It's it's being together. Uh, that sense of community, right? This isn't a bike that I can, you know, on the weekends I feel like you'd meet up with all of your Honda Navi friends similar to your Honda Grom gang or your Ruckus gangs and just go ride. All right, let's, I, I want to wrap thoughts up on this bike because I really do want to do that on the, the motorcycle. You know, this has been an unbelievable day uh, and clearly a fantastic experience. What a launch for a bike like this. I hope it does great. I think at $1,800, this is quite a steal. It's literally the least expensive motorcycle that you could buy brand new. Uh, it comes with Honda reliability, it comes with uh, Honda's support, both in their dealership network and their warranty. The 110cc single does plenty. The CVT is perfectly fine. I mean, very smooth. I've not felt it do anything but what I've wanted. The suspension is okay, but you know, again, $1,800, where are they gonna cut costs? Suspension, the braking components, you know, there's a lot of plastics and it's not the nicest looking motorcycle that you'll ever see. But I think that if you bought it and put even just $1,000 into it with some personalization, you're still coming in $600 under the Grom's MSRP, and you have a bike that's yours, uh, and it can be customizable even you know further down the line. You can grow into it. So yeah, I'm, I'm sold. This is a this is a really interesting bike from Honda. I, you know, it's changed a lot of my opinion about these lower displacement, lower cost motorcycles. I'm having such a great time right now, and that's it. That's that's motorcycling in a nutshell. Is is community? It's uh, you know entertainment and enjoyment. And it's I'm getting all of those things from this experience here. Muy bien. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. Subscribe if you'd like to uh, be here for the new content. I'm gonna be putting out a lot of videos in the next few months, both on motorcycles and in a very cool four-wheeled project that I've been working on. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.